Hello gang and welcome back to day two of Vlogtober. Hope you all checked out day one of who Rashida B is. If not, make sure to check that out. Today we will be discussing basic steps that are needed to buy a home. Before we get into this video, make sure to thumbs up the video. And if you're new here, make sure to hit the like subscribe button so that you can be notified of my videos in the future. And also welcome, welcome to Rashida B land. I'm no realtor, but I do have experience, you know, purchasing and selling homes. I purchased my first home in 2015, and I have since purchased five homes, and I've sold three of those. The key factor in buying a house is to have good credit, money, of course, W-2s, and your bank statements. The top major things that you need in order to buy a home. This is a very tedious process, so please be prepared to see, send, and sign a lot of paperwork. But don't look at the bad side of things because it's such a great honor and a blessing to be a new homeowner and to have a fresh new home that's yours. So it is worth all the hard work, baby. So make sure you stay tuned and let's get into the steps that are needed to buy a new house. Let's go. That I'm suggesting that it's very important is to have good credit. You don't want to have a higher interest rate when you're purchasing a home and a lot of banks won't deal with you if you don't have good credit because they feel like, well, if you can't manage your credit before buying a uh, purchase as such as a house that's over mo majority homes, especially new constructions, this day of time, they're very expensive. But 200 and up maybe 150 you can sometimes find great deals on homes but if you can't manage you know life before buying a home with good credit most banks are not going to lend to you so credit is definitely one of the most important things and if you stay tuned i have some ways and you can build your credit up even if you want to clear your credit any any debt that's awesome but it's also other ways that you can go around buying a house um, to if your credit is bad you know so it is ways that you can build your credit up so that you can make this purchase deal but we do recommend to have good credit you know so that's number one the next thing i suggest to before you buy a house would be having money of course you have to worry about the down payment first of all even buying a house you want to make sure that you have money for when something happens to your house. So I feel like that's very important. If you're not buying a new construction and you buy a used home and your AC unit goes out, and you have money saved up to do that. You're kind of already running into a dead end. So I would say to buy a house, the least I would personally be comfortable with, depending on the price of house you're buying, anywhere, at least having 10 to 15K, simply because half of that is gonna be spent by like when you're buying the house so you will have to pay for your down payment and that's upfront money that you're going to have to have when you sit at the closing table so most if you have let's just say you had a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage that you are financing through a bank lender if your percentage that you're paying for your down payment is going to be nothing less than three percent so if you do 200 let's do the calculations Let's just say you do the calculations of, and you can do this on your calculator. Let's just say you buy a house that's $200,000, right? We're going to say that. And we're going to times that to 3%. That's $6,000 that you have to bring to the closing table. If you don't have a VA loan, then you will have to bring that money to the closing table because the VA offer if you're in the military they offer you know no down payments and they do have other options that um, loans out here that you can get no no down payment or down payment assistance and stuff but for the majority of the part we're going to just speak on conventional loans for this particular vlog and then you also need your W-2s and bank statements 
So with your W-2s, of course, they want to see that you have been filing your taxes and paying, you know, doing handling your business in that area. So most of the time they ask for two years of yours. So if, let's just say you start this year to purchase a home in 2024. They want your 2023 and your 2022 tax returns. And then for your bank statements, every lender is different, which and when I say lender, I mean every bank. So every bank is different. Some banks require three months of your bank statement. Some may require more. Some may require this or some might just ask for that current month. You never know. Every bank is different. The top four things that are needed to buy and purchase a home. Once you get into those steps, like I said, it's a very tedious process, but be prepared to just see a lot of like you're going to see a lot of paperwork you're going to have to read a lot you have to sign a lot and you definitely will have to send a lot of information to the bank they're going to request your documents they're going to request you know if they have questions when they're going through your paper paperwork and underwriting they're going to want to see all of this stuff you don't have to start this process until you decide on your house so once you decide on your house or you pick the house that you want the ball will get to rolling and they would need all these documents because of course they're trying to close you get to closing in a in when at least you know three months so they're working you know fast to try to get this done to get you a closing date like i said it's an honor and a blessing to own a home so don't feel like you know uh you know this is a lot you know once you get through this is you're done you know that's that's it so just make sure you know you're prepared and on top of that the next thing we're going to get into is a pre-approval now a pre-approval is needed before you start your process of finding a home now if you know a realtor it's okay you know they'll probably look out and say yeah i take you to see a house with no problem you know but the problem now why realtors want you to have a pre-approval because they want to deal with people that are very serious with buying a house they don't want anyone that um you know i want to buy a house but you not saving your money your credit score is not good so they don't want to waste their time because you have to understand these people are driving around you know showing you all these houses and they're not getting paid until you get to the closing table so they want to make sure that they're dealing with people that are handling their business and that are legit so with that being said, you know, they want a pre-approval letter. And what that is, a pre-approval letter is basically a letter that a bank gives you. So let's just say you bank with Regions or you bank with the Navy Federal or Wells Fargo or any of those institutions that offer mortgage. You get 45 days to shop around for lenders. So let's just say your first lender and this is just to get your pre-approval pre pre-approval letter and you need this before you start your home buying process because like i said no realtor is going to take out the time of their day to keep showing you a house if you don't have a pre-approval letter and this basically is a document that shows you okay you're approved to buy a house that's three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand that does not mean you should go buy a house that costs four hundred thousand dollars and i say that not because you might can't but if the bank has approved you for a $400,000 loan, or it's only first of all a pre-approval. And if you're doing a $400,000 loan, that's only the loan itself. We're not talking about your interest rate. You have the taxes, you have the the P, sometimes PMI, you have the mortgage insurance, you have, it's just a lot of factors that are in, you know, in tied into having a home. So be very mindful when you do get that pre-approval letter, you should shop down a little bit, at least a hundred K or so, you know, than what they're, they're saying your, your, your amount is. Of course, the lower the better, but I would say definitely, you know, try to go within your means and go a little less than what your pre-approval letter is saying. Want to scratch that full amount that they're pre-approving you for. You know, I'm not going to say the bank is against us, but they're, you know, <laughs> listen, be smart when you do things. When you get that pre-approval letter, you'll basically be going to the bank and the bank will be, you know, running your credit, seeing what you, your debt to income, which is, we can talk about in another video if you're not familiar with debt to income ratio but of course to make to make a long story short debt to income so it will be if you're making sixty thousand dollars and you have seventy thousand dollars or eighty thousand dollars or hundred thousand dollars of debt that's your debt to income ratio so you're spending out more money than you have coming in that's not a good thing 
So they, they check those type of things to make sure that you are capable of buying a house. That's very important. You want to pay off your bills and get things under control. Like if you have credit cards or you a car payment or, you know, if your debt to income is close, you want to pay some of those things off so that that won't be a determining factor when it comes to how much of a loan you can get when it comes to buying a house. So you want to have this pre-approval letter and once you get it, that does not mean you have to go with that particular lender that you received that pre-approval letter from. You can still, you have 45 days, like I said, to choose which lender you want to use. This is something that, you know, you are invested in. So you want to make sure, you know, you're doing your homework when it comes to it. So that's why I'm here to try to give you the basic steps that you need to get this started. Next thing we're going to touch on is finding a realtor so the top four let's let's run it back the top things you need are the credit the money w-2s bank statements they're the top four things you will need when you're buying a house after that the pre-approval letter so um you want to make sure you have that from your whatever lender or bank that you're using at the time after that you need to find a realtor you can find a realtor before or if you know someone or a friend, but you want to find a good realtor because you don't want to just get anyone. You want someone that's going to fight for you, that has time, that's not too bombarded with other clients, especially if you're new at doing this. You know, I'm a little different. I always kind of knew what I wanted before I called a realtor. I really don't like to bother people. Even though you are paying this person, you're paying them to do work for you, but they're not getting, like I said, they're not getting pay for this until the end so you kind of want to make sure that you research this person to make sure they're willing to fight for you because there's so many things that can go left when you're buying a house selling realtor and the buyer's realtor both get three percent each but the seller is the one that pays these percentages so they're working for you but they're still getting paid so they need to do anything any everything to make sure this deal goes as planned and to more so towards your liking because you're buying so um, that is very important and make sure they have a license, of course, to work in that state, that particular state that you're trying to purchase a home in. The three major ones that you're going to see on your documents are the conventional, a FHA, and a VA. This particular video, we're going to talk about conventional because I have only personally dealt with conventional loans. Most conventional loans require a 20% down payment. And when I say 20%, let's do the math because... You know, just to help you all out. So let's just say two hundred thousand. It's a two hundred thousand dollar house, and you have a twenty percent uh, down payment. So that would be forty thousand dollars down that you would need to bring to closing for the down payment on your home. Most conventional loans will do a three to five percent. So you can, you know, they still have another option. You don't have to just drop 20 percent down on the house. They do have other options that are ranged between three to five percent. It comes with the private mortgage insurance. So you have to pay up, I think, like 80 percent of that insurance. So it's like an extra insurance that is added on top of your mortgage loan because of you doing a lower three to five percent down payment when it comes to buying a home um, throughout the process it is very um, strict you have they're going to let you know you can't make any major purchases besides your normal day-to-day -day bills that you're paying you can't go out and buy a new sofa you can't be putting stuff on your credit card just causing more debt to pile up on your 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 life you know on your credit and stuff so you have to hold those purchases off until you purchase your house so if you're deciding on should i buy a house first or should i buy a car make sure you go with the house first because they are very strict when it comes to buying you know the house the house process is very strict so you want to make sure you go ahead and do that first before you buy that new car i just wanted to come in and give you all some input on um the process of buying a house it is possible don't think that it's not it's possible for everyone to do you know it does not require a lot i've been buying a home like i said since 2015 and i love it you know i i moved i even moved you know several times and was able to sell my house so it's never a bad thing to do it's always a great investment so don't let anyone tell you otherwise a house will sell any day you you can't lose doing it you know so um 
I just want to come in, like I said, and share some insight on the home buying process because I didn't have the info or the information needed to do it. I just jumped first in and I, I just learned as I went. And I did a little research, of course, online, but just wanted to kind of come through and just give you the basic things that are needed to purchase a home. And if you have any questions, any comments, any any more, um, anything you want me to clarify or in-depth explain, you know, I can make a part two. I can answer your questions in the comments. Just leave me a comment below and I'll be willing to answer your questions with no problem. But like I said, I just wanted to come through and just show you what all it entails when buying a house, the process, and you know, just to help where I can. So without further ado i want to say thank you for watching my video welcome to day two of October, and i will be back tomorrow with more do not forget to subscribe like share and comment love you all have a great week Aww.